ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. My name is Rebecca Painter, and I am the Associate Director for the Textbook Publishing Team here at UAGC. Um, I will be the host of this session, providing positive and meaningful feedback to post-secondary students with disabilities. I'm really excited for this session, and I'm pleased <laughs> to welcome Dr. Toby Tomlinson-Baker, who is an adjunct professor at Cal State Los Angeles and a licensed special education consultant. By joining us today, you acknowledge that this session is being recorded and will be shared with TLC-related materials. Uh, microphones will be muted for this presentation, but I know from talking with Dr. Baker that she is happy for folks to come off mute and ask her questions during her presentation. She really wants this to be a dialogue, um, but otherwise you're encouraged to post questions and comments in the chat. Um, I also want everyone to know that we have enabled live transcription. If you would like to use it, click the show captions button at the bottom of your Zoom window. So now, without further delay, I'm pleased to turn it over to Dr. Baker. Hi, everybody. Thank you, first of all. I think this is, what, the Wednesday, the final day? Is it the final day or day two? Is day there two one of three. Yeah, there's one more day tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. So we're kind of halfway. Sometimes if it's the end, towards the end, everybody gets really hot and excited the first day. And then, um, so I appreciate every one of you for being here. Um, uh, I value your attendance because I know that you could be choosing anyone else to, uh, you know, other presenters and so forth. So I appreciate that. And um, and I am acknowledging, I know you all have your cameras off, but um, uh, just uh, let me know uh, when you uh, start speaking, let me know who you, if you want to join in. Um, like um, Rebecca said, this is very open. Um, I will go ahead right now and share my screen. I just want to throw out there for fun. Um, I, I hope you learn a lot, but also I, you know, I want to have, have fun here and relax. Um, so think back, many of you are professors or uh, very generally, you've all gone to college or you've had some sort of college related experience. Think back to when you were a freshman first semester in college and think about your professors. So think about that as we dive in uh, today. So let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna actually minimize also, especially since everybody has their cameras off. Um, so again, I'm Toby Baker, um, and I'm presenting Providing Positive and Effective Feedback to Post-Secondary Students with Disabilities. Um, and I um, am also a professor at Cal State University. And just a little bit about me. Um, I teach at Cal State LA um, in the curriculum and instruction. I teach all the future teachers um, that in, in that program. So um, also I'm a Los Angeles Unified School District. Um, I teach in elementary. I do all of the IEPs, so with special education individualized education plans for K through five at a magnet school in Los Angeles. Um, I'm also um, my alum in 2021. I got my PhD from Pepperdine in um, uh, institutional policy and and special education. Uh, rec and then I've also been recognized by various um, organizations. And then I also have, last year, I didn't want this to be the end of my research. Um, I'm so passionate about it that I said, I'm going to put it out there for everybody. So um, it's on Amazon. It's the number one bestseller. Um, and the purpose of my research and the reason, my reason for living, is um, to inspire and support post-secondary students with disabilities so they can graduate, whether it's graduate from high school and then go to college and then get a grad, and get um, graduate school, PhD, law school, whatever it is that they dream to do, they need, if they're going to school, they need to graduate. Um, and so this is my, my book, and the link is there also, and I think it's in the chat. Um, but it's also my story of, um, I have a learning disability and ADHD, and I went to six different schools, K through 12, and I that was, you know, again, that's why I said I have to do this research and put it out there, and that's why I'm in special education, um, and that's, you know, my my reason, my why. So, um, just to give you a little bit about me, the outcomes and goals, goals and outcomes of this session are to, for faculty 
to be able to pre share feedback um, to students and specifically those with students with disabilities to understand the perspectives of students with disabilities, connect with students with disabilities, um, build self-efficacy, um, and students can make changes to their assignments and how to support them with that and improve students' grades ultimately. So legal language, um, this information is presentation for educational, uh, pre educational purposes only. Nothing could be, should be construed as uh, legal advice, medical advice. Um, if you need legal or medical advice, you need to go to an attorney or a medical professional. This is just for educational uh, purposes. So college faculty. The thing about feedback and how it's presented um, the from the feedback from the faculty member receiving it to the student there tends to be um, a, 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 an issue a struggle with that college faculty continue to require institutional facilitation with implementing effective support and feedback to students with disabilities providing immediate and timely feedback to their students, uh, ensuring positive interactions with students with disabilities and impacts their graduation rates among students with disabilities. The purpose of my research, uh, like I said, is policy. Um, K through 12, we have the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA. And that was from, and let me move my, there we go, um, 1990, 2004, um, and that's still in existence today, K-12, every school in the nation has something equivalent, even if they're a private school, they have learning plans, but they provide individualized education to students of, with need, um, who, um, who have been, um, who, who need special education. Uh, no, there's, when the students graduate and go to higher education, there's no sweeping dis national disability law to enforce that all colleges, all colleges, use individual education plans. They don't have to. Colleges and universities are only bound to provide academic adjustments so they can adjust it to their school based on the students' previous IEPs to protect the students against discrimination. Um, and there's limited research on how academic adjustments are provided during instruction and how academic feedback is delivered. And so we're not looking at just the best schools or schools for the, who have a lot of services for students with disabilities. I'm talking a blanket of every single college in the United States is not on the same page. They're not uh, created equal. Now, this is interesting. We all know someone with a disability. I know we all do. We all know somebody with a disability. So it's interesting to me when I did my research interviewing faculty, how many of them said, I don't know how to support students with a disability. And, and they were very put off by having to support in the classroom. And I will go on to why. So for this, uh, my present, uh, my, uh, for my presentation, the research questions I asked are, what delivery strategies do college faculty employ to provide uh, positive and meaningful feedback to students with disabilities? And what measures can faculty use to increase positive interactions with students with disabilities? Very simply, what are they doing now and what can we do better? Those are the two questions. So here's a framework, my theoretical framework. When we look at faculty, I did specifically look at faculty. Um, I am college faculty. And so I looked at the delivery method, how I uh, provide feedback to students and students with disabilities, how other faculty provide uh, feedback uh, and, and with research, um, how the students are receiving it and what's happening once they receive it. So there tend to be students need, uh, students with disabilities specifically, need multiple opportunities. Uh, faculty need to provide multiple opportunities to a student if they, uh, to receive feedback. So when you think about a PowerPoint 
for example, if something stated, and I'll even use myself as an example of this, when I was a student even getting my PhD, if there was a PowerPoint and it had something stated a very specific way, if I um, if I needed something explained to me a different way, I needed to advocate, and students need to advocate to their professors. And if they need multiple opportunities, they need to, to, to tell them and connect with them and say, what does that mean? Does this mean this? How do we, what is this? And so they need to start advocating for themselves. This uh, leads to opportunities for student success. Another thing, with faculty delivering and how, the how of how they're delivering is positive then corrective. So rather than saying, okay, you need to fix this. When you're handing back a paper, I always have students do papers. When I hand back papers, I always say, you know, great job on getting the five C's that we looked at in class. Now, you know, why don't you focus on just this one C, um, compassion, you know, so if that's one of the things that we looked at in a lesson, a lot of it goes back to uh, the old adage, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. How are you delivering? It, it really does go back to basics of what kind of person are you being towards other people. So when you think about how you're talking to somebody, even if you, again, uh, you know, a lot of professors have PhDs, EDDs. Um, how do they talk to a student who's only 17 or 18 or 19? Uh, how are they treating them? Being mindful of their interaction. Um, immediate and timely feedback, uh, super important. You don't want to give feedback two weeks later. If something happens and a, a student uh, needs support in an area, they need support immediately. That's why, I mean, even as something as basic as I'm going to get back to an email within one day or two days or whatever the time frame is. But if somebody's uh, working on something, how do you uh, provide them with the immediate feedback? When it's happening, it's they're much more successful with that. Um, the feedback will increase their self-efficacy. This is how. Self-efficacy is how you feel, how you feel about your, uh, your, your, your work. So if you're in school and you're a student, how do you feel about being a, a student in this particular class? How are you succeeding? How are you, do, does, do you see your, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as an A student? Do you see yourself as a C student? Has somebody always said to you, oh, you're not very good at math? People have been telling me that I'm not good at math and statistics, but somehow I got my PhD and got my, passed my statistics class because I advocated for myself and I needed the feedback to make the corrections. This is how you're going to make uh, corrections in a positive way is by giving immediate and timely specific fee. What do I need to fix? This is what you need to fix. Now go do it. And friendly interaction. Again, you know, think back to your professors your, when you were young and you were, you know, in your first semester or your first year. What were your interactions with your professors? Did you even have interactions or did they uh, just, you know, lecture the whole time? Um, when there's a friendly interaction, there's greater evidence of academic content. The students are much more engaged, even on Zoom, especially because of Zoom, because we can't be in the same room. Uh, there's much more uh, need to have a moment uh, to connect. So um, those, the, the, this framework uh, leads to, to that. Okay, so um, literature review. So when I looked at the literature uh, for over 40 years from ADA, um, the, individual, uh, in the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, has been specifically um, amended. It's been amended to ensure that K-12 educators in every state are trained. So as a teacher in a K-12 setting, I have to take a module or do something or have to sign something. And, you know, we have modules and trainings throughout the school year. Uh, that's, you know, again, that's throughout the entire country. 
Um, but in higher education, neither the IDEA nor the Every Student Succeed Act of 2015 applies to higher education institutions for special education, which includes providing faculty, uh, including training faculty in providing effective feedback. So there, there is, is a lack of legislation. Now, colleges will say that the ADA it, it, the ADA is what protects students with disabilities. They're absolutely correct, absolutely correct. However, the ADA allows access to equal education. When Judith Heumann uh, and the uh, writers of the ADA and the facilitators in San Francisco, when they had their, um, you know, their their shutdown um, and were were uh, working on, you know, doing the um, uh, sit down for the ADA, they were fighting about having access to education facilities and institutions. They did not have access to that. They needed sidewalks. It took them 30 years to get that. Um, but that's what they were fighting for was access. So what it doesn't say in ADA is what that looks like for each individual once they are allowed into the institution. The ADA doesn't, it allows access, but it doesn't actually outline every single support for every single student. As K through 12 though, they have, ID, they have IDEA, so they do have individualized education plans for every single student. I include, just to make sure that we're clear, delivery feedback is a support. So I just want to make sure we're clear that when I say supports for students with disabilities, I'm including delivery feedback because delivery feedback is so powerful, it actually can influence a student to take action. And that's what we want. In my case study from 2021, students with disabilities needed additional time. I needed additional time and multiple attempts to complete academic tasks, but I was successful. I was I was gritty and determined, and I was going to make sure that I passed every class that I, I, I took. Um, students with, uh, may require processing time. It, you have the whole semester. It's not, you know, you have to get it today or you fail the class. You have processing time. That's part of going to college is writing reflective papers and writing, you know, meeting with your team and meeting with other uh, classmates to discuss uh, different topics. It's beneficial for faculty to provide multiple opportunities for students um, and, and to respond to meet college level academic standards. When faculty provide numerous opportunities and break tasks into segments, break things down, it increases engagement and allows faculty to assess the, the student's knowledge. And as educators, uh, this goes back to Vygotsky and the zone of proximal development. Um, you know, we have a gap that they start in August and they finish in December. We have a gap. We have to fill that gap. We have to constantly assess, assess by them asking questions, getting their papers, reading their papers, making sure they understood what the whole purpose of, of the, the big purpose of the course or um, the purpose of the assignment, why did I have them work in pairs, what was, so there's a lot that we have to think about when we're constantly asking them, but that's how we can ensure that they're gonna be successful. So feedback, Eunice found that uh, there was a fear and lack of communication between faculty and students that impacted their academic performance. However, com applying constructive feedback improved academic performance, uh, learning environment, and learning goals. There was positive interaction and feedback directed towards students with disabilities is inconsistent. And um, Altmiller found that um, uh, faculty address their students in a demeaning and disrespectful tone when delivering feedback. It was per uh, perceived as critical um, and consequently the students reacted in a derogatory perception of the faculty member. So when you think about how you deliver, what you it's not what you say, it's how you say it. A, a lot of times students are going to get things wrong. As faculty, not everybody's going to get an A plus all the time and that's 
okay that's our job is to support them and to figure out what they're missing um, but how we tell them and how we communicate that uh, you know that's where I think a, lo a lot of this is coming from students uh, if they had a, 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 um, a negative experience with a professor they're not going to want to go back to that class they're going to leave the class and complain about it and feel bad about themselves and I think also what what I found based on this research that students feel like they have been blamed it's their fault that they didn't get it the first time um, and then it diminishes the student and the views uh, can be aggressive and uh, that the the professor would be um, insulting them and that they feel that um, the professor is being aggressive that may not have been the case uh, sometimes if there's just a lack of communication and a, and a professor said something and then the student m misunderstood that is what creates the boundary the distance between them faculty should review their procedures and delivery feedback to ensure that they reflect themselves in the university in a positive light um, we all have if we're professors uh, my students have to uh, do a survey at the end of the semester to see if I provided them with everything that they needed. So, you know, it's almost like you have your, your I mean, I, this is me. I, I treat my class like they're my kids. I mean, I want to make sure that I'm nurturing them and giving them everything they need so that they can be the best teachers that they can be. Um, I'm rooting for them. Um, no student enters college with the dream of dropping out. They dream of graduating. They want to graduate. So we have to do everything to support them. Um, when students have had positive experiences with their professors, they're able to uh, access the curriculum. They can do it. And that raises their grades. Um, attitudes and professional behavior of faculty impact students' academic progress and are predictors of grad. We want them to graduate. We want them to become teachers. We want them to go on to business schools. And so feedback, um, criticism, and confusion can, um, inst and instead, we want to take action. Um, faculty and uh, student connection is the most effective measure of student success. When students view themselves, uh, view feedback as actionable, then they can take baby steps, steps towards progress. And I and say, okay, you need to do this. Oh, and then they go and do it. Instead of saying, you know, you, you didn't perform well, you didn't get this paper, go fix it. It's, you know, this is great, great start. Uh, but you know what would make it even better? And it's again, it's how you say it. Um, they won't see it as criticism and it won't cause them stress. Instead, they're gonna, it's gonna light up a fire and they're gonna wanna go and, oh, I wanna go fix this because I know I can do it better. And that's what we wanna uh, create. Um, the methods for this, um, for um, this, this research, um, I researched, uh, used a meta-analysis um, and here, let me move this out of the way. So I combined the results of multiple studies to explain how students with disabilities received feedback from uh, forms from college faculty. Um, I used standardized search terms to identify and collect peer reviewed articles and topics of feedback uh, faculty feedback given to post-secondary students with disabilities and then i used uh, specific terms faculty um, academic integration and positive interaction and just um, for methods i uh, use standardized uh, searches and ex ex executed the uh, by using database Google Scholar. Um, I, I began using the assumption that we need to train higher education faculty in effective delivery. Uh, that's uh, very important. There should be ways that faculty can improve in that area. Um, and it's intended to support faculty um, as well as students with disabilities, but the emphasis is focused on faculty. Um, it's between dates uh, 01 to 24 in um, English, and um, the faculty knowledge and support, they tend to vary. Because I know that at different uh, colleges, uh, different professors, different topics. Um, sometimes people teach Spanish, people teach business. Not everybody um, in my research 
uh, from 2021, not everybody uh, had, had was a teacher. Um, most of them were in uh, business or in some other area. So here are my findings. The IDEA does not travel to higher education settings with students with disabilities. So thus ensuring in individualized education. So college faculty may not be prepared to provide effective and meaningful feedback. They don't know what to do, mainly because it's they don't have to go to trainings. They're not required to. Most colleges, when they hire a professor, the professor goes and starts doing their syllabus. They don't jump in and go read case law. They want to start organizing when they're going to meet and what they're going to cover. And so higher education faculty continue to need institutional training to implement effective feedbacks, timely feedback, and establish meaningful connections with students with disabilities. And this is especially so on Zoom. Uh, when faculty acknowledge their students and provide them with meaningful feedback, students have a greater um, academic um, engagement in their academic tasks and then improving their academic achievement towards graduation. And in conclusion, uh, students with disabilities are enrolling in college and expect to receive the appropriate accommodations, including positive and meaningful feedback. Um, training higher education faculty will affect students' perception of them while allowing them for a more favorable experience. Uh, don't forget, the students are watching you too. It's not all about you know just giving to the students and provide you know um, t lecturing. Uh, there should be a definite interaction. Um, it's always interesting to me when I hear faculty say, oh, I didn't even know that person was in my class. They're on my roster. And I'm like, you should know every single person in your class, um, you know, especially by the end of the semester, my goodness. And then when faculty provide students with disabilities meaningful and positive feedback, they may ultimately impact student retention and increase graduation rates. We don't want kids dropping out. We, we, they entered college, they paid for this. They need to finish. Um, and in, they, like I said earlier, they dream of graduating. Nobody fills out the application for college and says, well, I'm only gonna go one semester. No, they dream of going all four years, putting the gap, cap and gown on, and moving the tassel, and doing the whole thing. Um, that's what makes it worth it. So, um, in, you know, again, in conclusion, um, I, I can uh, share my contact with you. Um, my references are available upon request. Um, but um, I hope uh, if anybody has any questions, now would be a wonderful time for that. And I hope, um, I hope some of you turn on your, your cameras. I, um, I usually give points to my students when they, when they turn on their cameras. <laughs> So I hope some of this was of value to you. So I would love to hear from some of you. I'm, t I'm talking too much. Thanks so much, Dr. Baker. Your, your enthusiasm is infectious. This is great. Um, I, I want to encourage folks to feel free to turn on your cameras, come off mute, um, put questions in the chat if you have um, anything you want to ask. Um, I'll go ahead and get started with a question that I have. Um, I'd be interested, you, you, had, you had mentioned um, the importance of making feedback actionable. Um, and I wondered if you had any uh, tips, any tips for that, any ways that that you found really effective in making feedback actionable and not vague and and more and more specific. Yes. And so some of these I mentioned in in my slides. Um, the best way, like I said, first of all, get to know your students. Second of all, um, when you have uh, group activities, there tends to be more interaction. And also um, just in general, um, when you're giving feedback, uh, you know, as you're interacting with that student. So, um, you know, when you're giving like with a paper or even even a test, um, you know, if there's something on there that reflects them, I have students right now who are doing um, a multicultural uh, paper about their families. And I'm like, well, tell me about your family. And then all of a sudden, when you start talking to other, you know, ask them, what, why did you want to become a teacher? Why are you in this program? So again, a, a lot of it is 
um, engaging. How many, again, I go back to when you were a freshman and you signed up for a class. Why were you taking that class? Because it was a requirement. What did you really know about that professor? Why did they get into that? Um, I think a lot of students miss that about, especially in education. Um, I wish they would, I mean, I, I tend to tell them, but I, I, I wish they would come to me and say, what made you want to become a teacher? Like, why are you doing that? Um, that is very helpful to them. I think we also tend to, um, you know, I'm very open about the fact that I have a learning disability and ADHD. In my class um, at Cal State, one of the first things I do is tell them that I have ADHD. And then what happens is, because I want to make it this, you know, the safest, warmest space, because that's where the true learning is. And so what, by telling them that, all of a sudden then I have like, you know, another student says, Dr. Baker, I have learning disability. No, I do too. And then everybody starts raising their hands saying, yeah, I have this too. Yeah, I have that. And so, um, you know, it becomes a very open space. I think then it becomes, you know, once it's a relaxing space, then we can dig in and do the work. And they're not worried about what does this person think of me? How are they grading me? What grade am I going to? I always, you know, they always say, what grade am I going to get? When you start your class at the beginning of the semester, it to me, and maybe this is uh, other professors do something else, but to me, everybody starts with an A. You, are, you already have an A. You're here. We're doing it. We already have that. So now let's do the work. Um, I, you know, I never assume that somebody can't do the work. I always assume that they can. So, again, when I was a student, I didn't want people assuming of me that because I had a learning disability that I wouldn't be able to do the work. I had a professor say that she always gave students with disabilities C's, and I said, "But I'm an A student. Why did I earn an, Why did I earn a C?" So again. Um, when you're giving feedback, I think if the question again is specifically what strategies, you need to specific timely feedback. Give it back to them right away. If you give somebody your paper, make sure you're telling them what they did right first, positive, then corrective, and then go into what not what did they get wrong, but what can they do to make it even better? Uh, there's an old saying with my dissertation, um, the best dissertation is a done dissertation. There are people who have spent 20 years writing their dissertations and they're still not done. Um, going back to that, you know, I think a lot of it is what are you going to do? How are you going to, um, you know, when you present it, what can they do right now? Um, there's, with different courses, there are different actions. So if you're thinking of one specific thing, first is communication, and then second, again, is use it in a positive way. Because once you put it in a positive way, they don't feel bad about themselves. They didn't fail something or bomb something or the professor doesn't like me or I mean these these thoughts it none of it might be true the poor professor might not be thinking any of those things but if the student perceives that the professor doesn't like them that can spiral everything down so um, a lot of it is you know I really like you and you're doing a great job let's fix this here's what you can do right now so again content is a different area if it's a math test you're going to have to explain the different parts of a math if it's a it's a spanish professor and spanish test you're going to have to explain the different parts of of that content but how you present it is is the whole key i i hope that kind of that answered of, your question that makes a lot of sense yeah no, I mean, I'm in, I'm in, I think you know this, but I'm, I'm in an editorial work, right? So we always talk about the compliment sandwich, you know, and I feel like that's what you're, what you're describing. Well, thank you. Yeah. You're about yeah, a lot of it is, how do you want to be treated? Oh, I'm sorry. Did somebody want to say something? Go ahead. No, I think, I think I was just gonna say, we, we have about 10 minutes left. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? I just wanted to, can you all hear me? Yes. 
Oh, okay. I just wanted to say thank you for all the information that was shared with us. I did want to ask, how do you make your class feel comfortable to want to speak to you and want to hear this feedback from yourself? I think because I, in a sense, I, I may, I mean, I just make myself vulnerable at some point. I think, and I found this, and this is research-based, uh, in my research, professors who have PhD, I have a PhD, I have a PhD, but how do you come off to other people? I, back in the day, I was an undergrad, so a lot of it is, you know, this whole thing is about belonging. Do you want to belong to a group of stuffy PhDs who think they're better than you? No, no nobody wants that. Um, what field are you in, Kimberly? You're on mute. Educational field, so I'm going towards my master's in education, so I don't want to be in the elementary level, but I want to learn how to speak to older adults um, that can, will encourage themselves to want to receive that feedback because it's a lot different working with early children mm -hmm. and working with adults that know a lot of this information already. So I just see how do you how do you open up that can, can of worms and make them feel comfortable? Hey, I'm here to help you. I'm uh, just tell me what you need I, just to provide that feedback. So what you're doing right now and what I'm doing, I'm modeling that is I want to get to know you. What yeah. like yeah. So as a professor, I would start to get to you. Also, I was one of the um back in the olden days, uh before the internet, I was the junkie that went to um office hours. Now we do Zoom office hours. That's you have to get to know people. And I know that when you have see that's the other thing, is it a small college or a big college? When you have a roster of a hundred students, it's very different than a roster of thirteen like we have today. So again, um, Kimberly, you're going into what high school, high school or adults, adult learning? I'm well, the so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, now, my main goal, I've been, I've, te I've taught elementary students, so now I kind of want to focus on hopefully one day become an instructor in the college setting. So that is why I want to familiarize myself how to respond to different um, groups because there's different educational settings, especially with the multicultural education. I mean, you have to uh, take everyone's perspective in different ways. So how to respond to it. Yeah, and then do you have students who are ELDs? There's also androgyny, it, or, or like uh, and, um, the um, study of teaching adults. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, getting to know them, there's a different level. When you're sitting with a group of kindergartners on the rug and <laughs> about, you know, um, you know, uh, fables and tales or doing like, I taught kindergarten for a couple of years because I did a special day class, uh, K through five. And so again, teaching them and then teaching the upper grades. Um, I did IEPs for students in high school. I spoke to them in a very different way than I spoke to the elementary. But again, how are you talking to them? So if we were doing a, a day, we did a day of the dead table in elementary school, and I had them bring in pictures of their grandmas and abuelitos, so forth and so on, um, Tia, Tio, and everybody, anybody who had passed. And so I am actually, I'm a monolingual, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant from Philadelphia. But somehow, I was able to connect with them because I brought in a picture of my grandma who had passed. So I joined there. Again, I connect, join in with them, talked. A lot of it is communication. I meet so many professors who say, oh, I didn't even know that Kimberly was in my class because they never spoke up. Well, mm -hmm. you've been there for four months. What? How did you not know she was there? So um, again, um, and then I meet a lot of students who uh, have disabilities and they don't self-advocate um, out of fear or judgment. Um, and I, I work with students and parents and so forth, and, um, but that's because that's what I specialize in. Um, is And then, of course, I talk too much anyway. So I was the one in, right in the front saying, what does this mean? How does this, what is it? But then I made, and, and that was just me. That's my personality. So 
you have to figure out when you have a class of high school kids, the kid who's all the way in the back, who doesn't make eye contact with you, Kimberly, how are you going to, are you going to ask him a question to check for understanding? Again, it goes back to zone of proximal development, very basic. How do you teach? Um, and that's what I do at Cal State. I teach how to teach, how do, what strategies do you use? How do you call on them? Do you have an exit ticket? How do you check that you just spent 40 minutes, uh, half an hour, an hour, whatever it is, but however long your lesson is lecturing, giving information, providing, providing, how do you know they actually received it? Mm -hmm. so, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I appreciate so, it. Yeah, if that one kid, you need to, like, some teachers walk around in the aisles to check. And, so, you know, that's, checking for understanding is huge. So, um, you know, you don't, you don't just leave everybody there and then say, okay, everybody give me a perfect survey as your teacher. You mm -hmm. have to be doing something with them. So, yeah. I hope I answered anything, and I hope you all have my contact information. If you go home, this happens to me all the time. You go home, and then like you're thinking, like, oh my gosh, I've, I want to ask this. Please email me. I think I put my email there. Um, I can definitely um, share my email with you, Toby Tomlinson Baker at Gmail. Um, so if anybody has any more questions, please, um, I'm here to share. <laughs> I put your website in the chat as, oh, as well, uh, Toby. Um, I think we're we're about out of time. We've only got a couple minutes left. Do you have any closing thoughts uh, you want to leave us with before we end the session? Sure. Um, just that, again, um, make sure you connect with your students. That's part of, I know I think this is, a be belonging was the theme of this, of this um, yeah. Um, Students who belong or feel like they belong in a university, tend, they, that increases graduation. Again, go back to why did they come to college? They want to graduate. So always go back to basics. Um, you know, go back to your, your reason, your why. Why are you doing this? I always go in with, a, you know, I'm here to give to the students so they can be better teachers. And then when I go to my school site, I, you know, aim to be the best teacher I can be and help all the other teachers. Um, you know, go always go back to your why. So, you know, why do you do it every day? And students will, will see that and, and they'll, you know, that's how, that's, most of it is connection. Just, uh, again, connect with your students. Uh, don't be invisible, connect with them. And um, when you're providing feedback, just again remember what it was. What was it like when you received feedback? We all receive feedback. So again, this just goes K through 12 and beyond. How do you want to receive feedback? Uh, you know, how do you feel when you receive feedback from that one person who makes you feel horrible or that way? You know, you want. You want to, excuse me, you want to avoid them, you're not sure. But when somebody's there to support you and be actionable and get it done and hand that paper in and get it right and understand the concept and is working with you, you want to be with them. You want to be there. And that's what we want for the students. That's how you'll get more students. I always, <laughs> I always have wait lists for my class. And then the one thing I always do, I was telling the dean about this, <laughs> I never turn anybody away. If you're on my wait list, you're in my class. I always have, I'm supposed to have a max of 30. I always have like 45. So, That's so wonderful. I, never, I never turn anybody away. <laughs> so, well, yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Thanks. Baker. And thank you to everyone for, for coming and participating in today's session. Um, I put a link in the chat uh, where uh, for to a survey that you can use to nominate TLC presentations for conference awards and share your feedback on your conference experience. But um, thank you again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.